Yeah, okay. All right, everybody, we want to welcome you. This is the Global Watch International Call. It is March 18th, 2024, 6 a.m. Jerusalem time. This hour is The Journey, which is our weekly discipleship time. We are going through the book by Alan Kirshner called Pre-Wrath, a very short introduction to the Great Tribulation, Rapture, and the Day of the Lord. And for this hour, we're going to be discussing the last two chapters in part two of the book. The chapters, names of the chapter are Paul on the Resurrection and the Rapture, and Four Reasons the Rapture is in Matthew 24, 31. And then starting next week, we're going to go into part three of the book. This is the final part of the book. In part three, uh, the author is discussing the next event after the rapture, which is the day of the Lord's wrath. It's important to note that from the author's point of view, we will be raptured just prior to this occurrence, which will be at some point in the three and a half years of the Great Tribulation, probably more towards the end. So um, let us have, uh, Amy, why don't we have you open us up in uh, prayer, and then we'll get right into it. Father, we just want to thank you for this time together, for just the freedom that we have to be able to learn about you, learn from others, and also be, begin to develop our discernment. So we just ask that you would give your wisdom, that your Holy Spirit would fill this time, This it is a precious time, and that we would be learning from you, that we would have revelation as to what you're trying to teach us in preparing your bride for the coming back of Jesus. So we just thank you for this time now and pray blessing on uh, Fred and Sue as they're leading and uh, sharing just some of the insight and then all the insight that many of us bring uh, in things that we've experienced. So we just thank you so much, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Amy. All right, Susan and I are going to have uh, some fairly brief comments. We don't want to spend too much time doing that. And we'll have maybe a couple people give their comments to the whole group. And then we, we will go into breakout. We'll have a breakout session question and we'll go into breakouts. So Susan, let's uh, start with you. Give us uh, what you think were some highlights from these two chapters. Yeah, they're not exactly chapters, but two sections. And the first one was on Paul and the resurrection and rapture. And um, honestly, I had to read these two sections about three or four times before I could really kind of get to the point of where what, what he's about. So um, I'm just going to summarize this briefly, and then we can take it from there. Um, and the nuances he, he discusses very well in these chapters. But um, the first one is this Paul and the resurrection and rapture. And um, he goes through the um, timing and characteristics of the rapture uh, fairly distinctly, I would say. But in summary, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 to 18 is one of the key verses that he um, calls on, or he speaks about in Matthew 24, 31. And Matthew 24, 31 says, and he will send his angels with a loud trumpet blast and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. And in this first section, um, he articulates the sounds of his return. And I thought that was interesting to pull out the sounds of his return. It's not a silent thing like um, the, uh, the series uh, out there calls it they something just evaporates no <laughs> there's going to be a sound the sound of uh, uh, the shout of a command the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of god and there's no gap between the rapture and jesus coming like um, some of the other uh, eschatologies speak about and that's i think a very key thing to understand and that's in first thessalonians 4 17 then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air i don't know how you can get away from that <laughs> that that the um that the rapture and the coming of the lord is separate it's not it's one and the same it's all in the same time frame but there is a, a sound, 
that's going to be released over the earth before that second coming. And he articulates that again as the shout, the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. I thought that was very um, interesting. And then he says that there is a sequence of um, this rapture. First, there's going to be awakening of the dead in Christ. And um, <clears throat> I thought that was interesting because in um, Acts, where is it? In Matthew 27, 52 to 53, it says, and tombs were opened and the bodies of many saints who had died were raised. They came out of the tombs after his resurrection and, came and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. I, I think that it's really interesting for him to draw that out of Matthew because that's what we'll be going through. There's a process, there's a sequence of the rapture and we will be on earth for a little bit of time in resurrected forms intermingling with those who are on earth and then he'll rapture us up so I, how long those things are don't ask me i don't think we know and some of this is uh unsure because we have to be bereans in this and continually seek the lord so there's a sequence and then uh, there is a, a coming together of those who are alive and those who are resurrecting from the dead the resurrected dead ar arise first and then we'll meet for a season. And then I don't know that it's a season for a period of time. And then <clears throat> be resurrected with the Lord. And then um, he emphasizes Matthew 24, 31 in the last section of this uh, book, or of this, this portion of the book. There's four reasons why Matthew 24, 31 speaks of the rapture. And again, Matthew 4, 20, 24, 31 is, and he will send his angels with a loud trumpet blast, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So um, there are four reasons that um, this speaks of the rapture. Number one is that Jesus and Paul use the same rapture language. Um, and Paul uses the word, epi, um, Jesus uses the word episynagogue to be being gathered. Jesus uses the same word in Matthew 24, episynagogo. That is the action verb of the same word. So I don't want to get so technical. I just want you to know that Jesus and Paul are using the same language. I could say something more about that, but I won't. I don't want to get us confused. So number one, Jesus and Paul use the same language in that, that verse. There are parallels, number two, parallels in the book of Daniel to that which is in Jesus' Olivet Discourse. Um, there is a sequence in the Olivet Discourse that is the same as um, in the book of Daniel. And you can go look at... He enumerates those parallels in the book. You'll have to look at the book. Um, there's parallels between Daniel 11, Daniel 12, Daniel 12, 2 with Matthew 24. Um, and I won't go through it. You can look at the book and see where those parallels are. So number one, Jesus and Paul use the same language. There are parallels in the book of Daniel and in Jesus all of its discourse that speak to this. Um, number three, um, Jesus and Paul uh, describe the return of Jesus um, in the same way. There's lightning, there's a glory in the sky, and uh, the power of heaven, the heavens are shaken um, <clears throat> as, as the return of Jesus comes. So Jesus and Paul both speak the same thing. And finally, we are all gathered out of the great tribulation. And he goes through the seven seals speaking to that uh, scenario. Um, Revelation 6 reveals the six seals and they are without interu interruption. 
there's a pause in Revelation 7. And the fifth seal promises wrath. The sixth seal portends wrath. Then the seven protects from wrath. And the seventh seal pronounces wrath. So that's all in the book. And that's a lot of mouthful to, to grasp. But basically, there is a trajectory <clears throat> to the uh, rapture that we will know and that we will experience and that we will see. That's reflected in the book of Daniel. Um, that's reflected in Matthew. Yeah, in Daniel and in Matthew and in Revelation. So um, there's parallels from Daniel into Revelation with what um, uh, Jesus speaks in Matthew. So he's we interweaving all of those things, saying the same thing, and that there's a progression, and that we're in that, I believe that we're probably in that progression right now. So I hope that was helped yeah, these chapters it's, here. It's, it's he gets into some uh a lot of details that are mm -hmm. it's not actually helpful to repeat all those details you know here for the purpose of this discussion but um <clears throat> just generally speaking there's consistency from um the prophetic language of daniel and what jesus said in the Olivet discourse to what John wrote in Revelation, there's it's consistent. Yeah, in in yeah. this in the pre wrath focus, I I honestly I honestly don't I know there's some this is a sensitive issue and some of you who are very involved with the the pre trib rapture, um, I would just invite you to start studying these scriptures and be a Berean yourself. Um, and for all of us on this line, we are doing this to help prepare us to prepare those around us to endure, to run the race with endurance. And honestly, after doing the three and a half years and with IHOP, talking about the end times is revival for me. It's, it's just been such a hope um, and it stirs my faith. And I pray that this does it for you too, that there's no room for fear here. Yep. Amen. Um, the, you know, my, my comments are, um, we, we were kind of, you, you did, you did a great job talking about what these two chapters or sections were focusing on. Uh, what I did was kind of pulled back a little bit and just, uh, just was thinking about the fact that, um, you know, the, the scripture goes into some detail, really, about the sequence of things that are going to happen during the Great Tribulation and, um, and you know, when Jesus is coming back. And uh, so my, um, what I felt like the Lord was saying to me about this is, you know, there's, there's clearly, the Lord wants, part of the preparation is the Lord wants us to know these things so that we can have some idea of where we're at in the great tribulation if we are in fact going to still be here um until the uh until the wrath of god until the seventh seal and so that's partly i think to bring us hope and make us realize that it's not going to be um it's not going to be the the suffering is not going to be forever but uh but the question in my mind and this is going to lead into the breakout session question is if 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 God is not going to rapture us, you know, pre-tribulation, but if he's going to be, it's going to be pre-wrath instead, and we're going to endure uh, a significant amount of the three and a half years of the great tribulation uh, and be suffering during that time, then the question is why, why would the Lord have us do this? So um, uh, I'm just going to leave it there. And I'll have um, we'll have a couple people just um, add their comments to um, to these chapters and to this the book in general. We'll start again with you, Jenny um, Hager, and then we'll call on maybe one or two other people, and then we'll go into the breakout session. That was an 
excellent summary from you, Sue. Um, and as you say, as we're studying this, we seem to be going deeper and deeper uh, in, into it all. I'd like to say that you get out of this what you put in. Um, and I know that some of you haven't been, I, I pick up on breakout rooms, you haven't been able to buy the book, but read the scriptures. Like here's the opportunity to really dig deeper, to, to gain the understanding. I was, there's a number of things, um, how Paul sees the last generation of the church surviving under these very difficult circumstances. Why, I, I was going to ask the same question you're asking for breakout rooms. Why is God making it very clear about the suffering of this time? The suffering that is so stressful on the church that after three and a half years, the Lord comes, as it were, to rescue his beloved bride out of it. I was looking at um, Matthew 24, 37 to 40. For just as the days of Noah were, so will we come, come the son of man. For in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And this is the scriptures I'm picking up on. And they did not understand until the flood came and swept them all away. And I that believe puts the, Lord the fear of the Lord in me. <laughs> yeah, they, that's exactly it. I feel as I'm journeying through this and saying, I mean, the Lord makes it quite clear. The church, as it were at the time, has been, well, while the rest of the world is eating and drinking and carrying on just as normally, the church is going through intense challenge, intense suffering. Um, and in the midst of it all, Jesus says, uh, you know, when he returns, will he find faith? That's because it's such a, a struggle for everybody. Can they continue to see the light in everything that they're facing? Um, Daniel says there will be a time of distress unlike any other from the nations beginning up to that time. So the Lord is, I believe he's showing us all this to equip us and have us be prepared. And that was the warning that came through Noah. They didn't understand and they were as blind as anything and then it was too late. And that's the message of this to me. And that's what's helping me as I'm studying through it, going through all the seven seals and what does it all mean? Uh, and knowing that the, the kingdom of God is a pearl of great price. It's the narrow gate and God is calling us up to that walk. You know, yeah, um, and, go ahead, Sue. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Jenny, those are really good points. The one thing that has helped me solidify what the, what he's talking about is reading through Revelation um, 6 and 7, I think it is. Yeah, Revelation 6 goes through the seals and going into Revelation 7. And you can, as we've studied this, I think things will start to begin to solidify on, um, at least for the overriding trajectory of what we're going for. You can almost see the, the resurrection and the rapture come through chapter seven and in between these seals, the last seal and how things uh, pan out after that. But um, I would encourage you to, if you need kind of an abbreviated time frame to, to look at, look at Revelation six and Revelation seven. And after studying this chapter, and it'll, it'll help frame this up a bit. Amen. Thank you so much, Jenny. Um, Shirley Zemko, are you? Are you up on this? Do you have a, any comments that you'd like to make? On I these? do have a comment. Uh, um, it's not been that long ago that I was studying, like Jenny, um, uh, as in the days of Noah. Mm. And I think so much of it is that the people were not prepared. Today, I think we see um, it's not just Noah and his family that God was putting in the ark. And we have the opportunity to be in the true ark 
which is in, hidden in Messiah himself. But it was the people, those that were taken by surprise, that would not listen. They refused. And there's going to, uh, that to me is going to be part of the suffering as we watch what others go through, not just what we go through as believers. He has grace that, you know, I think when he talks about when Paul speaks of his grace being sufficient, I think that it's going to be a living the day by day in the presence of God and seeking God and staying close to God. And I believe that that's how the first believers made it, be it that they were thrown to the lions or whatever they suffered, there was a promise and they knew a lot of those people were there when he ascended and they're at that expectation of his return. So the growing expectation in all of us of his return, I think for myself, I look at, I'm just going to be a, a little bit graphic for a moment. When I had to watch my boy in the process of dying, it was nothing you prepare for. It's nothing that you can you can fix in and within your emotions, but the grace of God comes so strong that you walk through these things and then you see the hand of God, you see the grace of God and the mercy of God and the love of God. And I think that it's going to be quite the same way that as we go through these things, sure, we're going to learn a lot. We're going to learn obedience as he did. It says in Hebrews um, 5, 8, that even though he was a son, he learned obedience by the things he suffered. Mm -hmm. And so we too are going to be, we're in a nation that is extremely spoiled and extremely self-serving. And it's very difficult to break away from a lot of the, the systems of this world, mm -hmm. but he's going to help us. <laughs> and I think that when we look at the distance of time, that period of time of suffering in light of eternity is so short. Eternity is so long. And so he says, those that endure to the end shall be saved. So the, the, the heart has got to be that we are so anticipating the king of glory busting through those clouds and waiting for that great sound that's going to come like none other that will all the earth will see, all the earth will feel. And we respond to that. And I think that we live and are learning even today to live with a greater expectation of seeing the one with fire in his eyes face to face. There is nothing to fear but him. Yeah, amen. Amen. That's really? so well said, uh, Shirley. That, that's, I'm sorry. That's, that's so good. But you know, when uh, you were speaking, um, I love that he's going to give us the grace. And, you know, we, none of us grow on easy street. No. And, and you know, you can't prepare for it, Sue. I used to say, I thought your grace and, and I, the real, the reality is that grace isn't just something we store up. It's something that he provides as needed. That's so good. At the time. That's so At good. Time. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, part of this though, uh, what you're talking about having that community, and I believe that's why the Lord has this watch going. We're going to yes. need that community. I do too. As we go forward. Yeah. Yeah. So well said. I, and I, I think that the, um, uh, the fact that we, it's going to be, I think all, all the commentators and the people that we've read, the fact that the, the start of the last three and a half years is going to be very clear and very obvious then that's and that there is a three and a half year time period is something that i think will help us to endure that we know that it's not indefinite it's not going to go on forever and and as you were saying surely in light of eternity it's a very short time and uh um that combined with the fact that he's going to give us the grace to to endure you know he says those who will endure till the end 
but he's going to give us the grace to, to do that because we can't in our own strength endure it's just impossible to, and we do, and we don't know what we don't know what it is that we're going to actually have to endure until it it comes upon us so um that's so good let's let's go to the uh the the breakout session question that's a little bit different in a way from from what we were just studying but i think it's really important and i'm just putting it in the chat right now um one thing that's not mentioned in this book is the role that we will have in the great harvest that's coming during the great tribulation. And the great commission is still in effect during this time. So one question is, how can we best prepare to make disciples of all nations during this time of suffering? So in other words, we need to take a look at what we're going to do for not just for ourselves to endure, but for other people who are um, maybe questioning, who don't know, who are suffering as well, who are, how do we, how do we minister to them? How do we help them and disciple them to um, come into the kingdom? And uh, this is, I think, a very important question because there are some things that we can do to prepare and we need to talk about that in the breakout sessions. So Susan, let's, um, let's do this. Uh, I think that we we have 15 minutes. It's 25 after the hour, and uh, at 20 minutes to 20 minutes to the hour, let's okay. go back and and we'll um, we'll hear from uh, the spoke all the spokespeople from the breakout session rooms. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Let's Here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Well, let's start with room one. Room one uh, spokesperson. Go ahead and unmute uh, you. Give us a that couple. That was me. Okay. It was I. My sister's a grammar person. Um, anyway, we had probably several really good points. It was a great discussion. Uh, Lynette brought up about the template that we have in Exodus that that um, the first few plagues the children of Israel didn't go through, but the rest of them they were separated from. And so that's a picture of what God will, will do, that he has a provision for his people. Uh, the fact that Noah, during this time, we're talking about how we're going to function with the great harvest. Noah was a preacher of righteousness in the midst of a horrible and corrupt generation. He was called in 2 Peter, Peter 2, a preacher of righteousness. And then uh, three, that recognizing and uh, seeing the persecution in the world as we're in these prayer groups, we're getting, we're so isolated here in America, we're be beginning to be awakened. Our awareness is being awakened about other people going through horrible things and being persecuted for their faith that increases our uh, need to see uh, the, what they experience and the grace they experience will help build testimony in us for what we can also experience. And that, uh, and then it was shared that Noah's name means peaceful, providing comfort. That uh, we will be able to demonstrate to others that God is our refuge in the midst of um, th these situations that we are overcomers. So, yeah, wow. actually, Noah's Noah's name means rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, the the witness that we will have to providing peace for others is um, that's huge in the midst of suffering that when people don't when people don't know the lord they're not going to have that peace and uh and and they're going to be they're going to want they're really going to want to know people do now but when but when the suffering increases that's going to even be more yeah. more true so good thank you so much amy um let's go to room two room two spokesperson spoke about um the things that came forth was that the grace at that time will be great and will carry us and a scripture was given 2 Corinthians 4.17 um, that there'll be even greater grace at that time and that we need to really build our altar in our own home and um, that family altar is what's going to strengthen us for what's coming and prepare us for being able to share our testimony and to speak the truth so we're standing on Yeshua. Um, it was brought up about, uh, it was actually said, without that personal time, we people won't make it. it it just it's going to be too hard and so that personal time and that family altar is is really significant and important personal, and, um, personal time with the lord is that what you mean 
yeah personal time no, with the lord you know. yeah okay yeah yeah and so and 1 thessalonians 5 16 to 22 um it's uh talks about rejoicing all always and praying without ceasing and and it was said that people will see him in us and and want what they see they'll see that we're walking through it and so to be strengthened in those things that are in 1 thessalonians 5 16 to 22 and um, someone said about sharing the gospel, uh, doing it now, because if we don't do it now, when things get more difficult, it will be even harder to do it then if we haven't already been doing it. And um, uh, we've spoken about that we have, we will have the message of hope, of salvation. And so um, we need to go out and really share that Yeshua is out, the hope of the hope in us, the hope of glory, um, prayer that we need to be really praying. And we spoke about that, you know, during COVID when people were informed or told that it wasn't necessarily how they were seeing it, they couldn't hear it. And that there was a great deception and there'll be a, a great deception that will be hard for people to break through. And so there needs to be very strong prayer to help people break through those deceptions um, so they can hear the truth. And, um, it was said there was a different harvest. It'll be a different harvest because the difference between believers and non-believers uh, will be quite dramatic. And Jenny, um, it was shared that between the sixth and seventh seal, um, it says that that uh, up until then, people have opportunity, but we only have until then. And so um, there's an urgency in it. And the last thing was uh, strengthening our faith because it's our faith that's going to enable us to step out in, into places that uh, others won't go and, uh, you know, great exploits and um, the ability to really reach out to those who, who we wouldn't normally go into those places. It'll only be through the faith. And the last one was persecution. Um, there'll be, you know, it'll be difficult to get through to others, but they'll see the persecution and hopefully that will break down and people will come through. I hope that's not, that's yeah, it. Yeah, amen. amen. That's great stuff. I think um, uh, one thing that you mentioned that is uh, we hadn't really thought about, but or hadn't been mentioned up to now, is the strong prayer to help people break through the deception that 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 they're under. And uh, and this is something that uh, I, I think this is something that obviously we we can't. It's hard to do this by ourselves, but this is part of the reason why we have community is so that we can be um, we can be uh, praying a about this together. And uh, it's great, great stuff. Thank you so much, Deborah. Let's go to room three. Room three, uh, spokesperson, go ahead. It's me, yeah. Okay, lucky me. <laughs> okay, I would like to start with our last point. And the last point was my intimate walk with the Father, how we live will attract others. I think that's, well, that's more, yeah, that was one of the things was most important. And what really struck me was that um, the spirit of God's power is dynamite. That was really a well strong statement and that the Lord will show us how to pull down strongholds so that mindsets are changed. No more nice prayers. We, we want action. We want deep prayers that cause a difference and prayers from his heart that make a difference. Yeah, and it's also important to love ourselves because uh, that's a commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. And how can we love ourselves? I think just when we receive God's love for us, then we are able to love ourselves and then we are able to love others. And this will make a difference in that time when, yeah, the great deception and everything, yeah, will happen then love will make the difference real love will make the difference yeah and god's power wow. the dynamis power will make the difference wow so yeah. good and uh the lord will show us how to bring down strongholds i love that yeah. mm -hmm. um, lord, lord we say show us how to show us how the, to bring down strongholds now even before this time comes yeah uh, and we'll need it even more during that time but even now and mm -hmm. the whole issue of the of the deception Boy, there's so much deception going on right now. You know, how are we gonna, how are we going to uh, to deal with that? Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lord, the Lord's gonna show us all these things. Mm -hmm. so, and our yeah. relation to Israel is very important. That we really, yeah, 
that we show that we are supportive of Israel, that we stand behind yeah. Israel. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So good. Thank you so much. All right. Room four. That was us in uh, our group. Um, uh, and uh, the statement was made, the mess that we go through becomes our message, which um, which uh, when people see that we are uh, just, you know, dealing with stuff ourselves, just like everybody else is, but how we go through that and how we endure that is uh, is so important. And um, the, the statement was made that the Great Commission is um, that we love others and how we love others through the suffering that we're all going through. Um, I think that uh, uh, our testimony of how we endure through suffering is really important. Then the um, the two things that were that were made that we that hadn't haven't been mentioned is one uh, one of the people in our group who is involved in child evangelism says, you know, how are we going to uh, how are we going to minister to and speak to the children during this? And then another person said, also, we have to prepare the parents as well as the children. Um, so this is this is really important. You know, people with children, especially smaller children, how do we um, how do we deal with this and how do we prepare? And uh, so I think that this is uh, very key. And then um, finally, we need to be able to act instead of react. In other words, we need to be not um, not caught by surprise and just uh, by the things that happen, but we need to know um, and be able to speak to people about the things that are happening and will happen and do that with a sense of confidence that we're not just reacting along with everybody else. So those were our uh, messages from room four. Uh, let us go to room five. Room five spokesperson, go ahead. Okay, um, so I have just pretty much jotted down the list of the different things that was spoken. And I have to say, we had quite the advantage. We had Hei Zhang in our group. So when it came to talking about persecution, I asked her, I said, so how do you do it in the midst of, you know, where you are? Uh, what a jewel. Um, so one person said to educate with what you know of the scripture, you know, if, if you know it, you'll be able to relay it to others. And another is mentoring those who are open, uh, remaining faithful and walking together with those who are faithful. And um, one of the uh, examples was given of Andrew Brunson. And I always think of Bonhoeffer. And so when you're preparing and you're really trying to prepare your heart and your resolve of what it looks like in the midst of persecution. And you know somebody that has gone through it and um, you've met them and anybody that was at Earnhut met him. And so the reality that this is um, in our day and coming in the future and how he gave such honest and transparent answers to what he really experienced gives us really kind of a template to look at and say, if I were in that place today, how would I, I respond? Um, as much as you can do it without actually living in it. And then the, um, the intimacy with the Lord will reveal who we are, but also reveal who he is. And, um, keeping our focus in the midst of it all and not losing focus on circumstances and walking it out in, in truth and with others. Having the fear of God will keep you from, um, I scribbled it, I should be able to read it, I'm sorry. But having the fear of the Lord will keep you from fearing others. Uh, new wine requires new wine skins and so one was asking and talking processing how is it that not only corporately but globally will this new wine skin be fit to carry the new wine and to carry a global revival and so the response from someone else was that um, we are all different parts of the body and god will use each and every part 
So to really and truly be honed on your own part, knowing who you are, what your calling is, and being true to that calling. And um, that was about it. That's great, Shirley. And I, I just need to say that we're we are um, we're really blessed and honored to have Heijong be a part of the the uh, the Global Watch and uh, and her husband Jinje, the two of them that actually Andrew Brunson was their pastor, and they yes. and Heijong and Jinje had the opportunity to minister to him uh, while he was in prison and, and visit him on a couple of occasions and. Uh, yeah. And um, and Jinje even asked if he could be if he could take Andrew Brunson's place in jail. That's the that's this is the kind of of faith and uh, and dedication that the two of them have and 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 being in the place that they are. It's really it's quite uh, it's 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 quite a testimony, quite amazing. So Heijong, we love you. We are we're we're honored to have you be a part of our of our group. Do you have, hey, John, are you there? Do you have anything you want to add? No, it's a, you know, I'm, I'm really it's a, also, it's a really it's honored it's a, to know is a Fred and Sue is a, actually is a Fred and Sue and, and with the global watch is a, you are the one <laughs> who support us and to, to stand with us in prayers. And also uh, after, even his after is Andrew Brunson and Noreen, they were is uh, released, and my body is I was very sick, but it's afraid and so they would really worry about me, my health. So, you know, so I think it's a stay on the track and keep focusing on until until it's uh, you know that timing. We just trust because it's our lives. And our times are on God's hands. So, Amen. so thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you well, are my well, hero. <laughs> no, you're our you're our hero. And, and <laughs> hey, John, one of the things that we admire about you is that uh, uh, there's a lot of things that that you and Jinje have gone through over the last several years, especially. And you don't complain, and you keep you keep moving forward and uh and it is really it's a great it's a great testimony to the rest of us so thank you we love you may the lord just continue to strengthen you you're you're making a huge impact in the place where you are right there in turkey um all right let us go to room six room six spokesperson go ahead yeah i mean i think all the the basics of all the points that we we had have been covered maybe some of the emphasis um and my my thought was and it's just been brought out perfectly is that there are a lot of places in the world where the church is having persecution tribulation and so our response today should be just the same and you know we we need to be filling our oil jars with his presence um but we did have some emphasis on living by example as which has already been talked about knowing his grace knowing we can trust him and, you know, that'll make a difference to those around us. Um, we really did have a um, emphasis on the need for intercession in these days, particularly praying for two things, and, and one of them has been mentioned, well, no, they've both been mentioned, deception in the body. We need to pray that, the, you know, God's revelation will come to his people. Um, but And particularly praying for the young people and the ones who don't look like us, uh, you know, don't sound like us who are the new wineskin for reaching out to other people. Um, and so, you know, right now we need to be living, you know, in the miraculous power of God. And if we're doing that, then we'll be just stepping through. I mean, they won't even seem like doors that we're stepping through if things get tougher and we're facing the, the um, persecution that Jesus Jesus promises, regardless of what you think about which day we, we escape. The persecution um and Shirley talked about the privilege of you know being alive in these sobering days and um, just Mr. John uh, 1633 I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace and we've already mentioned the difference that us having peace in the midst of everything would make in this world you'll have trouble but take heart mm -hmm. I have overcome the world 
so um yeah so i think everything that we we, we cut, um, said has been covered but they were some of the emphasis we had yeah amen amen well tim when you're talking about praying for the people who don't look like us or sound like us uh, this is really important that we, 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 you know, even now, even before the tribulation begins, that we reach out to people that we're not normally comfortable uh, being around. And, uh, um, and uh, the, the love of God shines through no matter what your, how, what your cultural or racial or whatever uh, differences are. So that's yeah, really I, I think part of the point of, of that, of, of the observation was that God will be using people that aren't like us like they'll be part of the body but these young ones that will be you know have a different mindset the, the other thing that we didn't cover and no one else has is in your question you actually talked about discipling nations and yeah so how you do that in the midst of persecution and tribulation i'm not sure as distinct from you know making disciples of all individuals but, but if, maybe you've got some wisdom on that well, that's a whole topic in and of itself, and um, I think you know this. This goes to you know the whole issue of sheep nations and goat nations. Uh, you know, in the when when the when the Lord comes back and judges us, so we're we're not to just be looking to other people. We're to be looking to governments, and how do we pray for and influence um, governments as well? And so that's a that's a whole other topic. So it's but very good point. All right, thanks, Tim. Let's go to room seven, room seven spokesperson. Okay, Hillary, um, go ahead. You're on. Thank you. I've been asked to speak. Um, Ros Curry, such a blessing. She has the Myanmar watch, and she just really encouraged us with these dear ones who are in such trauma and persecution in Myanmar. They're praising God. They're worshiping him. Their focus is in the presence and intimacy. We spent time speaking about this. And, you know, even from the Fox's Book of Martyrs, I had a um, testimony of a, a man who was trapped in a Chinese prison for a long time. And the presence and intimacy of God's presence, when he was finally set free, he just grieved and yearned to be back in that place. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to encourage our hearts that you know as uh, Shirley so beautifully said such grace is given to us in these situations and Katya yeah. was very brave she was with four Aussies so she was saying in uh, Russia and we were praying for the Russian church that um, the reality of the fleshly nature and just like in Australia all over the nations we're really not ready we're playing around and uh, what the Lord needs to actually do to bring us to our knees and to bring that attention. And I just mentioned the um, call that God's had me to be part of, creating this um, template for discipleship, actually, with the National Day of Repentance in America. And it's looking into all the issues of the ites that Joshua and the younger generation had to confront when they went in to take the promised land and the reason it was so hard and the fear and the shame and the defilement and the hopelessness and all these issues that create unbelief. And mm -hmm. I just, the more I've been travailing and preparing this with the whole team, we're all going through this and dear Mary Zab is such a blessing. She was also in the room and Debbie. And you know, this is a travail I believe, for us to understand how to pray strategically, how to minister into this younger generation who are trapped in so many of these false belief systems and deceptions Amen. and to come into the fruit of the Spirit and all the things that God has with his God medicine. So that was really where we were with. Great. Thank you so much, Hillary. Um, it's great to have uh, uh, people who are ministering to nations where they're being persecuted and we can learn yeah. so much from them. So um, uh, bless you, Ross. We're we're great to have you. Great, we're we're privileged to have you with us as well. Well, thank and you. and thank thank you, Ross, for uh, continuing to minister in that area. It's yes, yes, that God has your a call on your life for that. Amen. Amen. So Amen. good. All right. Last but not least, let's go to room eight. Room eight spokesperson. Uh, the important things really is knowing our own identity in Christ and knowing our own ability and in, in the areas of insecurity in our own life, mm -hmm. we need to 
be ready to, to really come to the Lord in those areas and let him speak to our hearts and uh, bring healing to us. Um, so that's like getting real with God about our own weaknesses and uh, letting him speak to us. Um, <laughs> I took note of that verse. Take heart, I, I have overcome the world. <laughs> I think that came from somebody else. Okay, great. Thank you, Brian. Knowing our identity in Christ, yes, that's absolutely fundamental to it's a, one of the fundamental things to everything that we're everything that we're doing and everything that we are. And uh, it's so important to remember those foundational things and to really get very solid in them. Um, okay, we're, that's all eight rooms, Susan. We're going to go back to you for final comments or um, uh, uh, any kind of announcements that you have. So go um, ahead. Two big announcements. One is that this this week is incredibly spiritually active. I won't go through all the things that are converging this week, um, but if you're on the signal threads, you might want to look through it. Um, and uh, Jennifer Guetta, who has been on a number of our uh, daily briefs, her book in Hebrew, uh, in Taking Down the Altars of Baal, I think that's something like that, Taking Down the it's not quite the same as her uh, English version, but it's the book that uh, deals with Kabbalah. It's coming out in Hebrew this week, Wednesday. She's locking, launching a tour or different um, meetings across Israel. Let's keep her in prayer. Um, this is Friday is a big, the 21st to 23rd, there's going to be another gathering much like the uh, Nova a gathering in October in the deserts of Israel. Um, you can look on the signal threads, there's more information there. So it's very high active spiritually. Who knows what's going to happen, um, but there is a 12 hour worship starting 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. Saturday night to 6 a.m. Sunday morning, Jerusalem time. And we've got all the all the people lined up for that. And please do participate in that. If you can't be online, just be in prayer. Uh, but you're welcome to join us online on this on this line, and um, for that uh, time of worship. One other thing I just want to cast vision for is and what is erupting in this conversation and I see threads moving towards it, is the spirit of Elijah that God is pouring out, I believe, in this hour and this time. We're focusing on that for the um, Herrenhut gathering. And it's really interesting with the uh, unveiling of what is happening in the church, um, uncovering things that needed to be uncovered, uh, God is calling us as watchmen to gather with him. And yes, we're going to have Alyosha with us, who's going to help us focus on God's word. But I believe this is a meeting for the watchmen with the Lord. And it's going to be a different kind of a summit. And we're going to come out different than we went in. It's a serious call of God. And I pray that everyone on this line would consider thinking about getting to this summit. Amen. Yes, it's going to be very special this year. Very special. All right. Thank you, my dear. Let us have um, Ross Curry, since we were talking about you. Maybe you can unmute yourself and just close us off in prayer. Thanks, Fred. Father, we just come before you. We thank you for the wisdom that's that we've, we're experiencing that, that is being revealed to us at this time, Lord God. And Lord, we just want to, we want to follow what Sue said about the hope and the joy coming in these end times, Lord God, that we're going to come face to face with you in this amazing way, Lord God. And Lord, you're going to bring many, many, many millions into your kingdom, Lord. And that's all over the world. And we just thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we do ask that you would prepare our hearts 
Fill us to overflowing, Lord, that we can be your witnesses to all of those around us. And Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for those testimonies of your grace, Lord God. And Lord, we, we are dependent upon you for your grace and your joy in these coming days. Thank you, Lord, and thank you for everybody that's been on this call today. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Yep, and all God's people said, Amen. Everybody unmute yourselves, yeah. wave to each other.